I think Ben and I have like 100% less spider in our books. Oh, yeah. No question. I'm not so sure. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> I know for a fact that you don't. I didn't read either of your books, but I know that they don't appear. <laughs> I mean, spiders are arachnids, so they're kind of bugs. I got bugs. Okay, well, take it from there. All right. Oh, hey, what? Anyway. Oh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Secret Wars TLDR. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. And we're your war correspondents, and we're, today we're talking about, uh, well, Ben, what are we talking We about? are talking about Infinity Gauntlet number four, written by Dustin Weaver and art by Jerry Dugan. It was a very fun series up to this point. <laughs> this issue kind of dropped the ball. Damn it, because I was very excited, and after your re- reviews, I then go back and read them. Yeah. So, it's been really fun. It's Which been really fun. Which is what you guys and, should be doing, by and the way. I will say, <laughs> this is... Still is a fun issue, but it drops the story and the plot a little bit. It, they they kind of cheap it out. They're just like, let's go for a big fight issue. Uh, yeah, let's have everyone fight. Okay. So, so it reads in like four minutes. You're yeah. Like, cool, cool. Oh. You flip through it and you're just like, well, that's over. What happened? They fought. Oh. It's the worst. I don't, it's not terrible. It's cool, I, but I hate it when you're in the middle of a story and then it's like, and they fought. Especially considering fought. what we had last time. So last time we found out that Thanos... Uh, gave up the time gem to the Nova Corps, basically this family. Mom had come back and saved the family and gave them all Nova Stars. They met up with uh, Peter Quill and Gamora. They also then found uh, Groot. Uh, They now have Drax, uh, who followed them around. So we've got most of the the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, They have four out of the gems, and they just went to uh, Adam Warlock and his city because he has the soul gem. But when he introduces himself, he says, I am Adam. Welcome to the city of Magus. Oh, no. Now, for those of you who don't know, like me, Magus is apparently his evil alternate ego. Yeah. Which, when he introduces himself as Adam, you don't expect that. You just expect that Adam Warlock is Adam Warlock, and, of course, he's going to help them out because he's Adam fucking Warlock. Right, no. No. No, he decides to attack them because she wants to combine all the gems, and he's like, but I'm not giving up the soul gem, and she's like, I'll take it from force, and he's like, oh, you could try. <laughs> And then he has these rear, really lame uh, villains just attack them. Oh. Basically, one of them is Master Blaster. One of them is a uh, rhyming, fire-breathing she-dragon person. Okay. Who always speaks in some sort of poetic rhyme. It's okay. like the worst Shakespeare I've ever like seen. Like Etrigan? <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's real bad. Uh, one of them you don't even really see fight, and one of them just challenges the dad the whole time, being like, you know. Let's fight. Like, come on. Pretty much like... Is he fronting? You know, if, if you don't do something, like, he's like, I'm a pacifist. And she's like, you know, if you don't fight, I'll just attack your daughters. And like, you know, if she doesn't take... And he's like, I'm not saying I won't fight, just that I don't like to. <laughs> and that just goes on. So stupid. Weak. It's real bad. And then Peter Quill and Drax get into it because Drax is looking for Thanos. But, you know, the mom and Adam Warlock, Magus, are going at it, trying to go back and forth. Mm-hmm. Turns out... I'm going to spoil this a little bit. <laughs> turns out the bugs... In this part of the planet, which is below the shield wall. Oh. It's down here in this friggin' area. Oh. The bugs are currently being controlled by Adam Warlock. The reason they're attacking everything is because he has Soul Gem sort of connected to this giant behemoth bug. They call okay. it a behemoth bug. It's the biggest bug in this I world's ever seen. I really mm-hmm. thought Ben said a Morlock. Yeah. And I was like... Like which one? A Calypso? Yeah, I was like, what? And I was like, that is not... What yeah. he said. So then they go down to the below, like below the earth, and they eat all these mushrooms. And they're <laughs> no, that's Jordan Son of the Earth. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so <gasps> it just ends up with Thanos finally revealing that he's the bad guy. <laughs> no, I'm a dick. No shit. We knew this. Yeah. So, so are the this is this Thanos and the this life is not that Thanos gonna fight? Oh yeah, probably. Over... I hope so. Are there multiple Infinity Gauntlets? Yes. Did he have one when he got on the boat? On now, the raft? So, no. No, Thanos on the raft Real did not Thanos have one. did not have a Thanos. So there's only one Infinity Gauntlet. There's only one Infinity Gauntlet. Well, technically there are two, because the Nova Corps created a gauntlet to house the gems. Okay, it looks very mechanical There's only looking. one set of gems, I should say. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah, no, Thanos is in. Probably. But here's That's another thing. That's pretty fun. Yeah. So, for... I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't show this happening, but... So, Adam Warlock and the mom are going at it. She has... The space, time, mind, and power gem. Oh, awesome. She's fucking unstoppable. And apparently they're supposed to be even more powerful when they're being used in conjunction than when they're alone. Yep. Adam Warlock, Magus, only has the soul gem. Yep. But she tries to attack him and he's like, what good are your gems? What, I have your soul! What? 
and her soul starts being sucked out of her. No! No, that's what happens. That's... Hey, hey! It's in the book. Yeah, well, it's canon. I can't argue with that. So he starts sucking her soul out, and then Thanos comes in and blasts him off of her with his fists. Right, because he's got powers or something. He shoots some kind of lasers. (laughs) He then beats Adam Warlock to a pulp. No! Just, just wailing on him. Oh my god! The mom thanks him, and he's like, "She's like, we have to stop him. He has this giant bug that he's controlling inside the city." And he's like, "I'm, I'm counting on it." <laughs> he literally says, "I'm counting on it." Of course he is. He takes the soul gem. He somehow yells her into submission, <laughs> and without seeing it, suddenly he has all of her soul, all of her infinite gems. Oh, in his gauntlet, right? Because he, of course, has his gauntlet. Yeah. Well, it's his, his gauntlet. It's made with the holes in it. I will say this. The cool thing that Magus let us know is that with the mind gem, you have to actually concentrate on controlling what you want. Mm. Um, and it has to be sort of synchronous with what they want well as oh, okay. well. Okay, so you got to trick them into thinking they want what you want. Yeah. With the soul gem, as long as you're passionate about it, you can make them do whatever you want. So, Thanos has now all... F- not all, all six. No, only five. Oh. Five of the stones. He doesn't have the reality stone. Oh, right. And I don't understand what difference that's going to make, because even if someone else finds it, he's going to be stronger with all of his stones. And he's also Thanos. He's also Thanos. Well, maybe if the more rooted in reality you are, the more... Um... I, think yeah. it's, I think it's the, so, the less rooted in reality. No, it should be the more. So you need, like, Deadpool, because he's the most rooted in reality. Because... That's very true. <laughs> Deadpool's just like, what? No, this is a jelly bean. Yeah. Chew, chew, chew. <laughs> yeah. And that's where we get Deadpool versus Thanos. Or he's like rock candy. But he, it's yellow rock candy. I don't know if he'd eat that. No, probably not. Anyway. So, all right. At the end of the book, Thanos is pretty much all-powerful. He, you know, Drax is like... Ugh. We know so, us fight. Yeah. Basically, Drax is like, I've been looking for you the whole time. And Thanos is like, oh, I was letting you follow me. Because I was bored. Because <laughs> I don't and care. And he grabs him, and he flies up in the air, he snaps his neck, and you see a giant bug come, like, crushed, like, bursting out of the ground. Out of the city. Oh shit! And that's the end of the book. Cool. Is so it, it's like, is it like, uh, be- not Battlefield? Yeah, like like uh, Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. Very much. <laughs> like too much. Right. Only it's bigger. Oh cool. Like this thing is insanely huge. Oh, it's a behemoth. Yeah. Nice. It's <sighs> this book let me down. <laughs> you knew that Thanos was going to betray them, but I expected it to be done in a better way, sort of more in a more underhanded way, instead of just. Oh, well, hey, there's a stone. I'm the Punch. bad guy. Oh, don't know. I have them all. Well, remember, in don't the, ask how. Early in the series, he was like, see, he's like, oh, we're going to get the shit. So he's always. Yeah, he's but just that's gonna, also, he was going like back and forth through time. He was playing the long game, yeah. Yeah, but like, this is not the Thanos I was expecting. This is just, oh, I see an opportunity. I'm not going to plan. I'm just going to, I'm just going to jump. Well, maybe it's just a way to show how inferior he is to real Thanos. I really hope that's the case. I really hope that it's not the family that defeats this Thanos. <laughs> it's actual Thanos. Because so far, also in this book, there has been no reference to, reference to Doom, no reference to all of Battleworld, nothing whatsoever. Mm. I mean, so, they, they live in the sh- like the, the shit area. Like, yeah, they already they know. They live in the shit area, but like, like, you think that that would be, I don't know, present. some kind of notification to them that like... There's something else out there. The shield wall. Like, they had to have gone against it at some point and been pushed back because, no, you're not let through to cross. Right. I don't know. Weird. I was... I guess they're just preoccupied with living. <laughs> That's fair. Well... <laughs> Those wusses. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, uh... All right, so... I so, guess... do I recommend this book? Oh, I still recommend it. This one was a slog. Maybe skip this one and see if number five is better. Like, don't read number four yet. Yeah. That's fair. Cool. All because right. If the story doesn't go anywhere, it's just not going to be worth it. Yeah. So, here's a book that I know people are not a huge fan of. They're not? I mean, like, people who dig this type of book, dig this type of book. But this isn't for your average... Right, we're not bringing people in This now. isn't, like, your average Marvel reader's book. Okay. okay. I gotta be honest. I've well, good. You know on. what? Like, that's how it should be. You're right? shaking the boat a little bit. I freaking love this book. Really... Freaking love this book. Love this issue, love this book, love it all. 1602 Witch Hunter Angela, part three, uh, in which hearts rend and heads roll, written by Marguerite Bennett and with art by Stephanie Hans, with further entertainment by Kieran Gillen and Marguerite Bennett, uh, and art by Fraser Irving. So far, they have dispatched two Faustians. Yep. Um, 
Captain Bucky Barnes and Edwin Brock. Oh yeah, that's in, the, great. in the last village, and then they were given a hot tip as to where they could find another one. Oh. A lot of these Faustians, they they like they're saying they didn't really start cropping up until they saw Marlowe's play, and like that's where this oh. whole yeah like. It's this whole thing where it's, like, tied to that, but it's not really tied to that. Okay. They're off to this castle um, where there is a, a girl, a woman, who um, is having some issues. Okay. Uh, essentially, she's, like, in modern, like, not in modern, but in, like, a, like you know, reality term, she would be, like, possessed. And they would need to have, like, an exorcism. Because, uh, like, okay. clearly there's, like, the fey magic at work here, right? Okay. So they go there and they um, meet Coulson. <laughs> which is why i was like is this like a shield kind of no it's not um uh, the name um and he is like you know taking care of this chick essentially who's like the daughter of the bishop and her name is anna marie oh wait is colson still like he's not the son of cole how about that okay um <laughs> it's not agent colson no he's like a high-ranking something or other um but they don't really get into it they just call him master colson got it like, so neat um and anna marie is um locked up in this tower essentially she can't touch anybody she's not allowed to touch anybody <laughs> um she was one of the witch breed um right. for those who have read 16 to the witch breed are mutants it's what they called them yep um for that time period it's rogue yeah everybody if you're not sure what i'm talking about it's rogue <laughs> subtlety's dead here yeah so it's over it's rogue who cares um we figured that whole thing out um but she clearly has like the fey magic in oh. her and she's clearly a faustian right um but it turns out that, like, her story is that, you know, she discovered that she couldn't touch people and that she had the touch of death, essentially. And she, like, fled to, to that life to, to get the power of the fairy because, like, it would she could make a deal and then she could touch people. Yeah. And that's what she did. What really matters is that in this book we get that um, Angela's waiting to see, like, if she has another outburst because she'll rarely have these outbursts. And Sarah figures out that what happens is the Enchantress puts a little bit of herself in each of the Faustians, oh. like, as though, like... She's using them as puppets. Okay. Um. Mm. So clearly that's what hap- what's happening. So it's like, well, can you kill one without the other? Like, yeah. You know? Um, and she has, like, this outburst, and, like, Angela goes up to, to care for her, and, like, she's like, I can hear her in my head, or Rogue says that, essentially. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she's like, tell me a story. And so every in every issue, someone has to tell. We a have story. a breakout story where it's different art, and it's the man, both art is spectacular. Um, and in this, it's and it's usually a story of them going to the theater, right? Um, and in this, that's exactly what it is. Except usually Sarah tells it, and Angela's like, "I'm really bad at that." And she's yeah. like, "I need you to tell me a story." Ah! So she tells her the story about how like she and Sarah went to the theater. They went to go see um, a play that was being acted by uh, Johnson and Bowen. Okay. Who they thought were two fine actors, and uh, they want to do Romeo and Juliet. Oh, that's funny, Johnson and Bowen. And let me let me get to my point before you just take my thunder. Don't you steal this from me? And um, there's another gentleman there by the name of Marshall who wants to play um, the Romeo character, and they they say no. They say nay to that, nay, sir. And um, Johnson and Bowen put on the play. the play, and during the the point where there's supposed to be the poison, Johnson drinks the poison and Marshall has tampered with it and mm-hmm. made it into this like chemical mixture which is to kill him. Right, a real poison. A real poison. But instead of killing him, he essentially disappears in his cloak onto the stage. He becomes a Jedi master. <laughs> and um you know, freaks out and comes back as cloak. Right. It's really cool, and I don't care if you're laughing at me. Right I think it's now. awesome. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at what they did. It's that's a fun cool. way of it's actually doing it because, like... and I and I looked up because, like, I kind of know Cloak and Dagger, but I didn't know their origin story. And Marshall is the chemical, yeah, like the chemist who like who made the drugs that they yeah that exactly. Made the and so um, then Julia. yeah, because they get their powers from uh uh-huh. from drugs. So in that he's trying to get like um Bowen. Clo- or dagger away from cloak oh okay and like she's like no and she just keeps going out with the play because this is happening while the play is going on right because... and angel's like getting ready to go yeah but the oh show man must go on. she is she is a professional yeah, yeah. and she just keeps doing the like line not answering the phone and, and well she does the thing where she like she's like you know let there be some poison left on your lip and she kisses him and that's how she becomes dagger dagger that's cool and then she says oh happy dagger this is thy sheath yeah. and, she sta- and she like throws a dagger at marshall killing him and then they disappear that's fucking awesome it's amazing i was like 
This is why I love 1602, because we get these little awesome snippets of totally different, like, origin stories for these characters that you'll never see. We never have to know anything more about yep. them. Like, there you go. Yep. That was awesome. So the story isn't enough to, like, quiet her yeah, mind okay. and, um, you so know. cut her head off. Well, no, and she, like, gets, <laughs> like, wings shoot out of, like, Rogue's back. It's like she's becoming, like, a fairy and, like, cool. the Enchantress is kind of coming through. Okay. And, um, she, like, kind of has, like, like, she's, like, Anna Marie is, like, really torn. Like, she's, like, trying to take control, but, like, the Enchantress is there. Mm-hmm. And she gets, like, a moment of clarity and she takes Angela's, like, glaive, essentially. Yeah. And, like, she stabs herself. Aww. And they're like, ah! Um, and Sarah shows up and, like, is trying to, like, keep her alive. Mm-hmm. And in doing so, Anna Marie broke the deal. Oh. And so it separated the two. Okay. So then the Enchantress is there, too. Oh, shit. And, the, and like, we are about to enter into spoiler warning territory for those of you who, um don't want to know what happens at the end of this book i'm gonna tell you um but i want you to read it because the art's amazing and it's really fun girl stole off and enchantress goes you've killed like you've killed three of my fast hands i'm gonna count this one like she's saying like we're counting this one yeah this, this one, is the third this, one this, ca- this counts even though like she we didn't kill her mm-hmm. you did it it was you and she just killed sarah okay well i mean you told her a story and it was so bad she killed herself yeah right it's kind of your fault i yeah. mean like just Kills her. Right. She's dead. And then she leaves. And they burn her body. Oh. They burn Sarah's body? Oh, yeah. No. Like, she's dead. Oh. Okay. I was not expecting, like, dead to be dead. Oh, dead, yeah. dead. I was expecting dead to be mostly dead. No, no, no. <laughs> no, she's... The best we could do is, is go through her, her pockets and, and look for loose change at this point. Um, and, you know, Angela's like, no. Yeah, now it's time for me to be a badass. And, like, she goes to leave, and she hears Sarah's voice, mm-hmm. and she picks up the skull, and she's going to take that with her, because the skull is not talking to her. Okay. And it's Sarah, and she's like, I told you it wasn't going to be uh, a tragedy, it's going to be a comedy. And, um, you know, she does the <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. Yeah, oh, oh, come now, this is the perfect Alas, poor Yorick moment, that, uh, and you can't even give me that. Like, because Angela's like, yeah, she's seriously? Upset. So, yeah. That's cool. Also, when she's lighting the fire, Angela sings Scarsboro Fair. I adore this book. What I don't adore... Was that ad? Is this ad in the middle of my book. Followed by this ad in the middle of my book. What are you talking about? Don't you want eight pages of ads? (laughs) No! I don't! That's that's baffling to me. But you but you only paid four dollars. See I understand putting in like a nice a nice three or four page spread. Yeah. It fits the story. Right, exactly. Don't put that bullshit in as an ad. No. No, it's just they're just covers for books that are coming out. Yeah. Because if you're reading a Marvel comic, there's no way you're gonna read another Marvel comic. Or be aware of them. Especially this one. There's others? Yeah. What? How is that even possible? So, yeah. So, yeah. I, here's the thing. I know this is a book for certain people. And I like it. So, and you know I like it. So, it's difficult for me to, like, convince anybody who's like, I like, you know. Well, I don't like that. Yeah. It's like, it's, I'm sorry. It's not going to be for you then. But I think but this, if it is. this book is spectacular. And, like, honestly, like, it's. I've always said that 1602 for me, because, and I think it is just because that was the first Marvel book I really read. Yeah. Um, it was an amazing entryway for me, and like I feel like even this 1602 is a really cool, fun gateway for people who are indie readers yeah. to kind of dabble in the Marvel Universe a little bit. That's fair. Thank you guys so much for watching this installment of Secret Wars TLDR. Hopefully we'll see you guys in another episode where we talk about some more tie-ins. Oh, that'll happen. Oh, no question. I mean, yeah. we're going to do it. It's just a question of when. So, we'll see you guys next time with an all-new episode of Secret Wars TLDR. Let us know in the comment section down below what was your favorite tie-in from what we've read or from this week uh, that this episode came out. Uh, let us know in the comment section down below. And before we let you go, I just want to let you guys know that we have a Patreon going on. If you go to patreon.com slash comic pop, you will find a whole slew of rewards and uh, goals that we have to make comic pop just bigger and better. No major changes, no major shakeups, just making a better product for you. So I encourage you to go to the description box down below, click on the link for patreon.com slash comic pop, check it out, look at what we've got here, and see if it's right for you. 
Hopefully you do us, but if not, no big deal. There's no... Uh, you still come to us. You yeah. still get us every week. Exactly, and it's still free. There's no... We're never going to make put any of this behind a paywall. This is all for you. All for free. All for you, Damien! <laughs> ah, but you, well, we won't kill ourselves. So Yeah, no. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. I'm Sal. <laughs> I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading.